Okay, Salma, hey. welcome everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, Zishan. How hey. are you, my friend? Welcome. Welcome to the Kind Works, Kind Soup family. Uh, Zishan is joining us from uh, New York City. Welcome. Um, and I'm going to introduce him just in a minute, but I'd like to welcome uh, everyone who's on this Zoom session. I know we have a lot of new folks who've joined. So just to tell you a little bit uh, about us, KindWorks, we're a uh, nonprofit organization based in the DC area, and we make volunteering easy, fun, and meaningful. Uh, and we've been around for about 13 years. Um, we do a range of projects from setting up apartments for refugee families to mentoring inmates uh, in, in the prison system to cooking, uh, meals with recovered food uh, in commercial kitchens to feed 200 men and women at homeless shelters, just to name a few of our projects before COVID hit. And now we have um, uh, had to do something a little different so we can continue to give back at a time when the need is greater than ever. And when the need for us to feel like we are supporting our neighbors and our brothers and sisters is greater than ever. So one of the, the things we came up with that Deb, uh, uh, Deb's great idea, which is this soup making every Saturday for the past, I think about three months, we have been gathering in our kitchens and making soup uh, and big pots of soup enough to share with our own families and plenty extra to share with those in need, whether that is uh, a neighbor who may be feeling down or um, folks at shelters, uh, at these consolidation hubs where uh, people in need um, are sent groceries and, and other supplies, uh, or food banks. And so there, there is so much need out there and our soup every week is so deeply appreciated. In fact, I just heard just a couple of hours ago, I was on a call with one of uh, the people uh, that we send our soup to, the Here to Help organization, which was started by a high schooler. She's now a freshman in college. Every Sunday, she receives uh, 60, 70 um, or more quarts of soup from us. And her mom was saying that everybody who's received our soup loves it, is so deeply appreciative. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's amazing what we've been able to do as a, as a group during this time 
Um, so thank you. Thank you for joining us and being part of this effort. And please come, you know where to find us. Every Saturday at five, we're at the Zoom link and we'll be making soup. So you're welcome, your friends are welcome. Tell your family across the country. Uh, this, this week, Zishan had the great idea that is there any way that we can get soup to our friends in Texas? And what we did in a, in a hurry, Deb and I, is just reached out to people that we know in Texas and, and the ones who are safe with electricity and heat uh, and internet, we asked them to join us on this Zoom. So perhaps somebody's here from, from Texas. We'll shout, we'll let, let, let us know if you are. But we'll continue to do that with a little bit more planning, um, try and figure out ways to get our Texan friends involved in cooking soup for, for their neighbors in need. So, Thank you for joining us. It is such a pleasure for me to introduce to all of you my very, very dear friend. He's like a, a brother to me. His name is Zishan. He goes by Zishan B. He is a singer. He's a songwriter. He's a multi-instrumentalist. And he's just a really, really good guy. Uh, and I got to know him a couple of years ago. We became fast friends uh, and I, love him as a person and I really love his music. It is my favorite kind of music. He has a sound all his own. It's a mix of um, blues and gospel and South Asian rhythms. He combines them all and it just sounds unbelievable. If, if you haven't had a chance to hear him, please look him up on Spotify. Maybe he'll share a tune with us today. Uh, it really is phenomenal music and it is music for our times. It is music that just uh, in, incites change, inspires action. So it is really a pleasure to have him with us. And uh, with that, I'll uh, introduce you to Zishan. Hey everybody, it's, it, it's, it's Salma Baji, so good to see you. And uh, you know, uh, it's so nice to see all these kind people doing all these kind things. And uh, uh, we, we've got some, some, some good, good stuff cooking up right now, don't we? Or maybe it's just me who feels this way. I don't know. I'll take silence as acceptance. I love that you had us start off by um, roasting garlic. So everybody's kitchen right now smells fantastic. You can't go wrong with garlic. I can't imagine a culture in the world that doesn't use garlic. Maybe Eskimos, because uh, you know where, where would they get it, right? I don't know. But uh, uh, certainly, when it comes to Italian food, it is uh, sacrosanct. And uh, you know, I spent uh, you know some of, uh, uh, of my my formative years in Italy uh, when I was a student in college, and uh, I, I was filled with the real appreciation for. Italian cuisine, la cucina italiana, as they say. And uh, so you got to have garlic, you know. Um, I, I trust you guys got the recipe that I sent. Session, is there any trick for getting the garlic out once it's roasted? Well, uh, so it, the, it's funny that I, I asked a question just now about the recipe. Uh, and your name, please. I'm sorry, I didn't see. I'm Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Nice to meet you. Um, it's funny because I was, <laughs> I'm going to caveat that recipe a little bit. Um, Salma had asked me, can you send a recipe? And the funny thing is me being a musician, me, you know, kind of growing up in like a sort of jazz tradition. I don't really work with recipes that much. I just kind of improvise as I go, you know, it's just kind of a jazz style of cooking. My parents, even when my parents gave me recipes, it was always kind of like, okay, this is a little bit of a roadmap, but kind of, you know, customize it as you wish. So uh, to answer your question, I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like they add you just throw a whole head of it in. Yeah, you can, I, I think you can squeeze it out. Um, but I, I, I just, you know, for the purposes of uh, this call, uh, Salma had insisted that I find a recipe. I said, I don't know. Uh, a recipe I'll, I'll try to find one that's similar to what uh, I do but I just you know smash the garlic cloves uh, like so um, not that this is any helpful to you guys but I just kind of smash them like this you know and and throw them in uh, but uh, so I, I, I 
I wish I could have some more guidance for you as far as removing them. But uh, like I said, I think the, I uh, uh, the recipe, the recipe is really just more of a, a roadmap. Uh, and I would encourage you to improvise as you go, because that's, I think, the way of true art, you know, uh, is to kind of uh, improvise as you go. I love, I, I love what you're saying, Zishan, but I know my people here. And so I'm just going to show them because please. they follow your recipe. They follow the recipe. Um, please. We're, we're less comfortable um, being creative than you, but we love that you are. So Cheryl and anybody else who hadn't roasted garlic before, you've got a little um, container with a couple of heads of garlic with the tops cut off. You've cooked these long enough that they're now soft and yummy. And all you really have to do is turn them upside down and squeeze and the garlic cloves just fall right out, and that's how you do it. That is it. There you go, folks. Okay, uh, back to you, Zishan. Now, now I'm learning. Now, now I'm learning how to. <laughs> I, this this recipe thing was funny. I said, "Boy, you're," and, and uh, Selma said, "Oh, our, our folks are going to want some guidance." I said, "Well, they're in for quite a ride." Um, <laughs> but I said, "I just kind of uh, groove as I go." And because uh, that's just kind of been the odyssey of my own life is just kind of improvising and uh, kind of, you know, I don't want to say winging it, but, but you know, kind of just improvising as you go. Uh, I would actually, and like I said, it's fine. I don't even know what fully in that recipe, but uh, I would like to add something. Uh, if you guys have any loose hanging peppercorns, you know, the, these are very ubiquitous, especially in any Indian household. Uh, we use these a lot. And I, I would encourage you to throw some of these in uh, just because I think they give this a really beautiful flavor. Um, so, uh, Zeshan, did you say just black peppercorns or, or pink peppercorns? Uh, either. Uh, I think just some element of whole pepper. Um, I, I have black peppercorns, but if you got the fancy pink ones, go ahead and throw them in. How many? Okay, I'm just actually sauteing my vegetables now. Do you, do you want to put oh. the peppers in with the sauteed vegetables? Go ahead. Go ahead. It's you all good. How, you, how you much peppercorns? How many peppercorns? Oh boy, I, I think I've opened up uh, a Pandora's box here, but I, I think maybe I, I I would just start with two. Oh, two. And, and two, yeah. See, 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 you know, see if that's you know to your liking. Everybody's different. Uh, I I like. I like three, but you know, uh, but like I said, for me, it's like a pinch. My parents would often give me recipes and they would say a pinch of this and that. And so, you know, uh, similarly with this, I think just a couple of them, you know. Although, a we, doubled. A Although we doubled the recipe. So for all of you that made the double that from the um, website, go ahead and stick four or six in. So she do you have to retrieve those afterwards or are they just soften up and you could leave them in i like leaving them in um I, but then again i've grown up eating what i call inconvenient food the food <laughs> of of india and pakistan is such that you with every morsel there's always a chance that you're going to eat uh an uh, an itinerant uh, uh a peppercorn or a cardamom you know pod <laughs> and I've gotten kind of used to that. And my wife can't stand it. But since I've gotten used to it, I, I've kind of, you know, grown accustomed to it. I kind of like, well, I might bite into a peppercorn, but, you know, it, it will have been worth it. <laughs> as long as it's not the last bite. The, the thing that's hard, especially with Indian food, is, you know, you have a nice spread in front of you. And then you're like, oh, my God, this is so good. And in the la very last bite, you bite into... Uh, like a peppercorn or, or, a, or a cardamom pod or some, or, or a piece of, of, of star anise or something like that. And it's like, oh my God. Um, I'm sure a lot of the other people from that part of the world, if you have any horror stories uh, that you'd like to share, feel free. Uh, but I, I, I would say just leave them in. Um, and you could, and if, and if you don't want to leave them in, I think you could take them off. You can take them out before you uh, deglaze the pan. That's what my advice would be. So Zishan, we're doing, um, we've got onions in the pan now. What else do you have in the pan? We do, let me show you. Let me, let me give you a visual aid here. Yeah. I got my chicken in here, uh, cause I just keep it in as much as possible. And then I take it out 
uh, when I deglaze and then shred it and throw it back in. Uh, but I got sort of a smorgasbord. I got my, my carrots here. I got, you know, what my dad calls the roughage, uh, the, the vegetables. I got, I got my celery here. I got some sprigs of, of thyme here. Um, if, if you don't like, uh, you know, thyme, I think you, what you could do is take it out. Um, the sprigs, you can even take it out once the soup is done. Usually you can find them. Um, you can take them out. Um, I leave them in, uh, much to the chagrin of my wife. Uh, I leave them in and, uh, let's see what else. I got some onions in here and, uh, got some garlic, got the peppercorns that are lying around somewhere, you know, uh, and, uh, that's kind of, that's what, that's what we have so far right now. I don't know what, where, where everybody else is in this process. I think that's where we are as well. Um, I'm going to interrupt you for a second, Zishan, to, uh, shout out to a few people who are joining us today. Um, I think we have our um, furthest away person to join us from Guernsey, all the way from Guernsey, the island off the coast of UK. Sarah, are you on there? Welcome and thank you for joining us. I don't know what time it is in Guernsey, but amazing to have you with us. Um, hey, Sarah. And also, we, as many of you have met on previous calls, uh, Yusuf loves to cook with us. Hey, Yusuf. And he, he had the record. Hi there. He had the record for youngest uh, chef on uh, Kind Soups. But I think now Layla has that record. Hi, Layla. Hi. How old are you, Layla? Seven. Seven. You've got the record now for young chef. <laughs> so oh, we um, got uh, RF Bay with us too. Is he going to be cooking? Too. I hope not. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have the record for the handsomest chef. <laughs> the, the, but the question is, how much is he going to be allowed to actually, you know, touch this food as as we're cooking? I mean, I know he's going to eat it, but the question is, is he going to is he going to touch it as it's being made? Is he going to actually cook it? Oh, with he he just went and picked the pine from our well from the garden. Oh. So 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 he's allowed. Yes, he's allowed. and he shredded the chicken. Oh yeah, he helps me every week, Bishan. Oh, he's, wow. he's actually a really good cook. He's a good cook. Well, I'm and welcome, you Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome. I think this is your first time with us. So, so yes. good to see you and Hannah as well. I'm so Thanks happy. Here. Thank you, Selma. Of course, pleasure. Okay, Zishan. So we're just sautéing everything together at the moment. We're sautéing everything together. I threw. Now, what I like to do, and you may or may not like this, but what I do is uh, initially I'll saute uh, the <laughs> the celeries and the onions, uh, but then as they start to get tender, then I throw some more in, um, just because uh, I like I I like having some that are tender. I like having some uh, that are a little bit more, um, shall I say, green in there, just to you know give it a little. Because we're going to deglaze this anyway, and it's all going to become this beautiful kind of smorgasbord um i'm i think right now at this point i'm done sauteing and you know i can throw the uh the chicken broth in i don't and and by the way for my noodles i think in the recipe uh it said to use orecchiette which are little ears if i'm not uh, mistaken if that's what was in the recipe but this uh i like to throw the farfalle these are uh farfalle means uh butterflies I throw these ones in. I like them with my Italian chicken noodle soup. You can also, but like I said, I improvise. If you have other, you know, uh, kind of, uh, there have been times where I've had, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's funny being an itinerant man. I've had different uh, quantities of different pastas lying around. And uh, what I do is I just break them up. I'll crack them in half like the spaghetti or the linguine or the penne or whatever it is. I'll just, you know, break them in half and throw them in uh to me it's not really necessary that all the noodles be uniform it's just you know uh it's just necessary that they're thrown in at the right time i like to throw the noodles in towards the end so that we can have them kind of al dente that's just my my preference but uh it looks like there's people here that are far more experienced than i am when it comes to culinary arts 
Bishan, how much are you really using? You know, they come in a one pound box. Are you really using the full pound or using half of it? Um, it's a good question. I use half of it, I think. Okay. I think because mine's also um, a one pound. Um, mine also comes in a one pound quantity and I throw half in, um, okay. but it's, it's all according to what, you know, uh, you like. I encourage everybody to customize. I know I, maybe there's not much appetite for that, but I encourage you to, um, you know, uh, do things the way you would want. You know, uh, maybe you like more of the noodles. Maybe you like more of the chicken. Um, I use only one breast, full breast of chicken. Um, I'm not sure if the recipe called for that, um, but I, I like to shred it up at the end and throw it back in. And right now I'm going to deglaze the pan. So Zishan, we're actually making... Um... Um, making a greater quantity. So um, we should use more um, based on, you know, how much we're making. So I, I don't know sure. about the others on the call, but uh, I used uh, four big chicken breasts. So definitely a whole bag of noodles for the amount that we'll be cooking. Cause we took your yeah. recipe and we doubled or tripled it. Well, hallelujah. If that's the case. Um, yeah. If you're using more chicken breasts then definitely throw some more of the, uh, uh, of the of the noodles in there and uh, you guys are gonna and and where is all this gonna go deb deb's gonna tell us you're muted so um for the people who live in the greater washington dc area we have on our website uh, five or six locations in Virginia and in Maryland, um, you know, sprinkled around where people can donate frozen quarts of soup to people, to uh, food assistance providers, and they're going to share it with families who um, have expressed an interest in getting some food help uh, during the pandemic. So people are encouraged to give their soup to neighbors, to family members, to have it at home tonight, and then to give away the rest of it. And we've made it easy for people to give away the rest in this area. If you guys who are from out of town know of places that will take soup, and now that you're making it, you might want to make a call or two. Please let us know because we'd like nothing more than to add a location in New York and a location in uh, Pennsylvania and one in California and maybe one in Guernsey, where if someone else were to join on Kind Soup Saturday, they could see on our website a place that you've already contacted that will take soup and share it with families in need. So please feel free to um, get in touch with us and give us that information. So beautiful. Thank you for, for sharing that, Deb. Thank you for sharing that very uh, uh, helpful information and for you know, spreading the good cheer. I'm going to, I think it's that moment now where I'm going to deglaze uh, my pot. Uh, and, you know, this wouldn't be right if I didn't. Now, someone may have told you that I have a, um, this silly habit of uh, singing to my food. You know, some people sing to their plants. They think it grows, they, they grow better. Well, I sing to my food because I think it'll taste better. Um, and it's good because cooking allows me to practice, you know, uh, you know, back in the days when I used to be able to go on stage in the pre COVID era, I could practice my, my tunes, um, by way of cooking. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm going to now deglaze the pan and, uh, seeing as though, you know, this is kind of an Italian-esque recipe. I'm going to, uh, I think it's appropriate that I, uh, sing something in Italian. How about that? So here we go. Here. It goes. C'è la luna mezza mare, mamma mia, mi marida te. Figlia mia, gutta dure, mamma mia, c'è pensa tu. Sette pesciolo ore, ci è issi vai, issi bene, sempre lo pesce male te ne. Se cinga per la fantasia, figuccia mia, figuccia mia. Oh, la rili la, pesce fritte baccala. We gomba, nuca la mare da giaccata. Oh, gomba, come me voglio marita. Anyway, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, singing to this food is only going to, because who knows, as it was being farmed, well, at least, you know, I, I'd like to imagine that some, the people that were farming and, and tilling the soil, whatever, were singing to, you know, pass the time as this food was growing. Now, you know, as it's being cooked, well, what better way? Uh, to to give it some love, um, infuse it with love, and so that's an, an Italian song. Uh, I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to throw a little bit. I think it needs a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And so uh, I think, in fact, I'm going to throw in a little bit more of the, the broth. That's, I think a, a little bit more. There you go. See, Sean, my, um, my deglazing needs just one more little um, aria. One more little aria. Well, yeah. well, how about since we're, Deb, I'd, I'd love to oblige you in your deglazing. Uh, Thank you so much. The, what, what if, you know, seeing as though we're trying to help our friends out in Texas, um, perhaps what might be nice is uh, uh, like, a, like, a, like a cowboy song. There's one that I particularly like. Uh, we're going to throw some pepper and salt in and I'm going to sing this one. It goes like this. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me. I'll throw. I'll let me first throw the the salt and pepper in, to give us that little impetus. A little bit of salt over here. Un pochino di sale, un pochino di pepe. Ah, incredibile! There we go. Okay, now, now I'm gonna give it a little bit of love, and uh, with this this country, with this Western tune. I don't know if you guys have heard this one. It goes like this. Well, it's lonesome in this old town. Everybody puts me down. I'm a face without a name. Just a walking in the rain. Going back to Houston. 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 Doo -doo, boom, 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 boom. I got holes in both of my shoes. Cause I'm a walking case of the blues. Saw a dollar yesterday, but the wind blew it away. You're going back to Houston. Houston. Houston, the key chains. Um, ba, 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 ba. I can't believe really in about a week. I'm so hungry when I walk, I squeak. Nobody calls me friend. It's sad, the shame I'm in. Going back to Houston, Houston, Houston. Houston. Do -do 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 -do. I got a girl waiting there for me. Well, at least she said she'd be. Got a home with a big bone bed and a feather pillow over my head. Going back. To Houston, Houston, Houston. Salman Arf got the right idea here. Oh, it's lonesome in this old town. Everybody kind of puts me down. I'm a face without a name. And just walking in the rain. Going back to Houston, Houston. Houston, going back to Houston, 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 do 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 Yeah. Oh. That was awesome. Yeah. That one's for Houston. Love, love to Houston. Love to Texas. Yeah, that well, was awesome. Somebody, you guys used to live in Texas, didn't you? We did. We lived in Houston. Well, you got out just in time. Uh, well, we got out a few years ago, like 12 years ago, but uh, we had a good time in Houston. I have to say our son was born there and we made some amazing friends. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's a good place. It's a good place. Lots of good memories. Well, Anybody I, on the call from Texas by any chance? I'm, I'm sort of from Texas. I lived there um, during uh, high school and college, and my family still lives in Texas. Ah, how hey, where does everybody? your family live? Well, uh, Austin and South Texas. My, so my mom and her husband are in South Texas, and they have kept power, uh, power and water and everything through this storm. But my brother and his adult children are all huddled in a one-bedroom apartment where they have power but no water because of their three homes. Two of them have neither power nor water, so. Oh, bless your heart. Bless them. Bless, my goodness. That's, that's, and, and I mean, and isn't that, it's funny, it's just so strange that your mom 
and her husband live somewhere that's on my guess is that is that a, is that a place that's on the national grid because there's some places in texas that are is that correct i you know i don't know because they said that even within their town some people were out of power but but they had they had power so yeah it's a good it's a good question i'm not really sure well well we we send our our best them oh, we'll, we'll have to send them some soup you know we send them some soup. this soup has been infused with texas now it has the indelible stamp of of uh, of texas and i like it. Uh, i, I uh, yeah i want to say there's another texas song i don't know if you guys ever you know when i was growing up i used to watch cartoons on saturday morning and i used to watch tom and jerry and um, tom and jerry has a kind of actual this gets a little deeper but tom and jerry actually has a certain relevance to uh, my parents my 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 dad particularly and his story as an immigrant um, because he said that when he was growing up in India when he was a kid um, and he would go to to see a picture see a movie um, they would show uh, first like a newsreel or a cartoon like an American cartoon and for the kids I guess and in the in these Indian theaters and he said that was my first exposure to anything American was Tom and Jerry I was seeing this cat and this mouse um, chasing each other. It wasn't, an, it didn't have any words or anything. It was totally transferable across. And he was saying that, you know, it kind of gave this very, this heightened perception of like America being a force for good. It's like America was cool. It was like, oh, that's, that's like, that's fun. Like he's like, it, it gave, it, 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 it gave us like, um, like a very positive image of America. He's like from a very young age. Um, and of course, you read the history and you know that the Ford Foundation and uh, the, uh, the Peace Corps and all these things that are going on, they're, they're you know, really amazing things that are going be diplomatically between uh, India and America. It's fascinating to read about that. But to, to a kid in rural India, seeing Tom and Jerry was, uh, uh, and this will get relevant in just a second, but like... Uh, um, seeing that was kind of his entryway to America. And, and he was saying there's other things that were, you know, like his, his dad would smoke cigarettes a lot and, um, you know, getting his hands on, you know, Lucky Strike or Marlboro or any of those Chesterfield brands is like the American brands were very positive. Anyway, my dad um, said that he would get a kick out of when I was a kid and I would watch Tom and Jerry. He said, because it was almost like things had come full circle. He's like, now I'm in America now my own kid is watching Tom and Jerry, um, and but he's grown up in this country, whereas that was my introduction to this country. So it's just it's it's very interesting these these connections. The reason I brought up Tom and Jerry is because I don't know if you guys remember the episode Texas Tom, uh, but he uh, Tom tries to uh, woo uh, a female cat uh, and uh, has some success until Jerry thwarts it. But it has this song in there called. It goes like this, if you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Da, da, da. If you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Da, da, da. We grow corn for hot tamales and grow jolly for the follies. If you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Da, da, da. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that or if anybody remembers that, but that was <laughs> another cool song about Texas I just had to share with all of you. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Uh, you know, you were saying that you use, you improvise as you're cooking. This is Hannah. Hi, Hannah. And, hi. And I was doing that because um, of all days, my husband decided to clean the oven. I didn't know that. And we went out uh -oh. and when I came back. I couldn't open it. I was like, oh my goodness. So my chicken is not quite done. But I saw you hitting the garlic and I said, oh, good. I don't have to bake my garlic, but like you, I improvise with things. I didn't have certain spices, so I'm using something else. It's Italian, oh. and I just throw things in, so I hear you. Power to you, Good. power to you, my friend. Power to you. you just have to give me the ingredients and I can figure it out. That's, that's, that's the jazz way of doing it. I mean, I'm, I am, I beam with pride uh, seeing that you are also improvising. Like I said, yeah. even, even the, the, the recipe, the manner in which to, that, you know, the garlic was, you know, baked or whatever it was, I, even I, I, yeah. I didn't do that. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, I, I was happy that you didn't do it when I saw you. I said, <laughs> oh, good. I didn't 
Well, it's, it's good, you know, um, husbands have a way of kind of getting in the way of things. So, uh, you know, I, I guess that's, you know, uh, my wife, you know, lets me do my thing in the kitchen. Um, you know, we have kind of an, an agreement, uh, but uh, she has to put up with a lot of noise. Let's just put it that way, because I'll be singing, I'll be, you know, uh, ca caterwauling uh, more. And, uh, you know, and she's, and it overlooks the, our kitchen, we're here in the Bronx in New York. Um, oh, our kitchen okay. overlooks uh, the TV. And so she comes back, you know, she's oh, the doctor okay, okay. comes back from a hospital and, you know, wants to just watch the news or whatever. And here I am, you know, saying, if you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Da, da, da. If you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Da, da, da. You know, and uh, <laughs> um, okay. anyway, I just thought I'd share that with all of you guys. What else is going on? Somebody else say something. I'm talking a lot. I have something to say. What you um, say is what what you're entertaining. Now all I have is garlic hands. <laughs> this is going to make it's me very, very romantic, Arvay. <laughs> make me very unpleasant. I, I made him squeeze all the garlic out. <laughs> now, 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 all you have to do is just you know put your arm on on your wife's shoulder and uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Leila well, knows what I would do. I want to take a step away from Texas for a minute. For anyone who needs their food taken to Germantown, who lives in the Bethesda area, I will post my email address. Send me an email and deliver it to my house before, well, let me see, before 1030 on Monday morning, okay? So anytime tomorrow, preferably already frozen, but if it isn't, I have room in my freezer, so not an issue, okay? Thank you, Marge. That's so helpful. I Thank love walking you. over to your house. It's know. always a really nice walk on Sunday. <laughs> um, I have a question about the recipe. I was thinking, I know some people are adding more veggies. Do you think it's okay to just throw more veggies into the boiling water now? Or, I mean, boiling broth, since I didn't brown, brown it? Go ahead. If you're feeling it, if it's in your heart, you've already said it now. I think you need to do it. That's right. Okay. All right, I'll just throw them in. Yeah. But they, they won't get mushy if I just throw them in rather than saute them. Anybody can make Remember Zishan said that he likes some of them more cooked and some less. So you are doing exactly what he said but if you need reason, to be a rule follower. But part of the reason, and I'd like to explain that, part of the reason is because I, um, you know, is, is because I, uh, like to kind of saute them just so that they impart some kind of flavor to the base of, you know, the soup. And, and Italian food is big about, from my understanding, it's kind of like Indian food where the basil elements, not basil, like, the, the, but I'm talking about the basil, like B-A-S-A-L elements of um, the dish, like they call it the sofrito, um, is, is very important. And it imparts like the flavor very early on. And so I think kind of in keeping with that, like I like to just saute, sweat, I, I like to say, not quite sauteing, but maybe just sweating these uh, veggies, like just so that they impart some flavor on the front end. And then, you know, I chop, uh, like Deb was saying, I like to chop some of them and, and throw them in once we've already deglazed because I let this cook for some time, you know, um, I let this simmer and, you know, it'll, I like to have a little bit of that, you know, uh, the, that really cook down stuff and then having, you know, some of them that are, uh, that have a little bit more life in them, if that makes sense. But maybe that's just me, uh, you know. It's smelling really That sounds hot. good. I like that. Um, this is Betsy. I just want to do a shout out to your wife who's spending her time in the hospital, um, in a very stressful time. So um, let her watch her TV and, and put a plug in it, you know, when she gets home. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question for Zishan. Yes, sir. Um, when you come home, when you come home from tour, then what's your favorite thing to eat? That's such an awesome question. Is this Yusuf asking this question? Yes. Yusuf, um, one of the things I like to do uh, and you're talking about when I actually am home, right? Because sometimes I like to go out and have a, a nice 
cheeseburger and a milkshake uh, from from a restaurant. That's my that's my my favorite thing to do after a performance because I'm so tired and so um, just kind of spent. When I come home from tour, um, you know, honestly, any home cooked meal. I like I like pasta. That's kind of my thing. I like uh, uh, like uh, um, bolognese. You know what bolognese pasta is? No. It's a pasta with with like ground beef. Uh, some people use pork depending on what you have, but I I make it with ground beef. Um, I like that. That's like a comfort food for me. Uh, I also like um, this uh, very simple uh, Indian Indo Pakistani dish called Peshawari Namkin Ghost, which is just very simple. It's just uh, uh, kind of like a beef stew. Uh, those are the things that I like to eat when I come back uh, from tour. But more, more when I come back from tour, the thing I like to do more is sleep uh, more than eating. <laughs> Yusuf, what do you like to eat after a long day of school? Uh... What's your favorite thing to eat? Like grilled cheese or something. Grilled cheese? Yeah. That's awesome. Layla, how's it smelling in there? It looks like it's really smelling good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it is smelling really good, Zishan, with garlic and... Isn't it? Oh, let me show you. Yeah. Look at this. I, this thing is coming together. This thing's coming to I have a very, um, true story, I have a very high-powered stove. This is like, a, this is a Viking stove. Um, my, our landlord somehow, you know, got a commercial <laughs> stove in this apartment uh, for God knows what reason, but the, the flame is so strong that I have to sometimes stop it and start it. Um, and, and so this thing was simmering and kind of boiling away too fast. So I had to stop and then start again. Uh, so it's kind of a very... That's partially why I, I, it lends to kind of the improvising because I, I kind of have to. That's the, the, the oven that we have. But this thing is, is when it comes to especially making desi food, woo, so good. It just gives that fire. Um, you make karai or you make uh, like salans or if you make chana or things like that, like rustic things. Um, it's, it's really, really lends itself. I'll show, let me show you while we're here. I'll, I'll do a little bit of show and tell. Um, show some of the Asiatic things I have here. This thing, this is called a handi. This is a terracotta, I think is how you'd say it in English. It's like a terracotta pot. Um, I use this to uh, cook uh, meat as well as chickpeas. Um, I also have this guy right here. Hold on, let me show you this. When I pound the spices uh, like cumin or uh, coriander, my parents said that if you pound it this way, uh, the oils release a little better than when you throw them in, in the grinder, which, I, you know, every now and then I cheat with that too. But if I have time, I pound uh, the cumin in that. Uh, and let's see, what other, what other tools of the trade? Uh, what other fun, random things do I have here? Uh, oh, I have this too. This is really cool. Let me show you guys this. This is like show and tell. You know? This is a tawa. Um, and uh, and I use that. We my my wife makes very good uh, uh, rotis like chapatis, and so she she's better at that than I am. That requires a little bit more precision. There's no no improvisation when it comes to that. You really need to know what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> you can't just wing it. And so she uses that. And uh, there's you know she does it with this rolling pin, which is a great tool for intimidating husbands too. Uh, you know it's this is a very kind of like you know, age old sort of thing. It's like, it's like, don't you get on my bad side. So when she holds that, I, it's, it's uh, quite intimidating, quite scary for me. Um, Where'd you learn how to cook, Zishan? Just taught yourself or? Um, most, from your mom or grandma or? Uh, I, I mostly taught myself uh, because uh, my, my dad doesn't like, sharing space with me in the kitchen when I'd go and ask him for uh, he likes he likes my mom and dad kind of both well my mom's a little bit more inclusive my dad kind of 
he doesn't like to share the kitchen with anyone. He likes everyone to just go away and he wants to do his own thing. And I kind of respect that now. Um, so <laughs> um, I learned a lot on my own. Um, I also learned, you know, uh, from my parents. I've, my parents have given me guidance, uh, uh, especially when it comes to cooking Indian food. Um, and, you know, uh, I've... It took me some time, though. I feel like uh, I was very big about eating out. I was very lazy when it came to cooking. Um, but, you know, having a wonderful woman in my life, my wife, um, you know, kind of changed that dynamic for me. And I found that it was a way uh, to really impress her. And I guess that's something that was passed down by my dad, because apparently that's how my dad won my mom over. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, um, uh, he didn't have the inherent charm that I had. So <laughs> I think he won her over through his cooking. Uh, and, and so the same thing with me, uh, my wife, uh, you know, when we first moved in, we were just dating. Uh, I think she reveled in the fact that I uh, was, you know, trying to impress her. And so I kind of, but I still have so much to learn. There's so much to, you know, I, I wish I could be like Yusuf. Um, I'm so inspired that Yusuf is, uh, and those of you who are just joining, Yusuf is uh, a young fella, uh, I believe was seven years old, eight, nine years old, um, you know, uh, cooking uh, and, and joining us on this call. And I, I yeah. just want to shout him out. Yusuf um, has joined us several times. Layla is joining us. She's only seven. And there's several other kids on the call. I would love to meet uh, uh the other kids on the call and some of the other new folks. Please um, introduce yourselves. Spendly family, how's it going? Hi, um, oh. my name is Ashley and her name is Elise and I'm 12 years old and Elise is 10. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's great. Thanks what for you joining guys us. Like uh, I like to make bread. Okay. Wow. And um, I also like to make cakes. Nice. Wow, so you, so you, you, in other words, you like to bake. Yes. <laughs> oh, that stuff's hard. Boy, bless your heart. Baking is 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 uh, pretty precise, wouldn't you say? You got to get the quantities right. Yeah. <laughs> You're more skilled than me. I, I couldn't do that. I, I can't do the precise stuff. Do you ever watch the British Baking Show? Um, no, I haven't, but I watch other baking shows. So. Oh, which ones? Um, I like to watch the Kids Baking Championship. And um, maybe Chopped, Iron Chef, <laughs> all those. Like all of my sisters like watching them. Maybe I, cupcake, I, cupcake Wars? Yeah, I've watched that before too. That's fun. Are you making sourdough bread? Because everyone during COVID seems to be doing that. Um, I've made that before, but I like to make different types of bread. Okay. Like maybe loaves or Dutch oven bread. Okay. Yeah, sourdough I think is Dutch oven too. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Awesome. Amazing. That's really cool. That's great. Thank you guys for joining us and come Thank again. You. And um, Mazik family, hi there. You guys <laughs> want to introduce yourselves? Oh, or hi. Else? Hi. What's your I'm, name? I'm Cassidy and this is my mom. Hi. And we're with Troop 3433 with Riley and Miss Carrie. That's Go awesome. Yeah. Welcome. What grade are you in, Cassidy? Oh, I'm in the 10th grade. That's great. How's your soup coming along? Oh, uh, very, I think it smells great. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. I'm sure it tastes great. Who, who else is on here? Any other kids who want to introduce themselves? Yes, my daughter Alexis would like to introduce oh, herself. I? Yes, oh, okay. you would. You'd love to. Hi, I'm 15. Um, I'm in the 10th grade. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Alexis. Welcome. I, yes. I like your I like your background, Alexis. Are you in the woods right now? No, I, it's just a background. I don't know. My mom put running. it up. 
It's the Rock Creek Woods. I was out on a run a couple weeks ago. Oh, that's a it nice. Was, it was that, nice. That's a really beautiful. My goodness, you, you, I used to live in Baltimore for three years, oh, and yeah, and especially when we'd visit uh, Salma and Arif, my wife and I, uh, we would uh, go to Rock Creek. Uh, it was just a really, really nice part of town. It's a good place to run because I'm from the country, and I can see deer and red fox there Ooh. and owls and. So Alexis is here with the Montgomery County 4-H Rabbit Club today, and we are having such a good time. We feel that we've already, we've been looking at each other saying we got to come back. We love the way you guys are all laughing at each other. We think you're hysterical. Marge, Marge, I think you're a kindred spirit. I don't know where you went, but you're, she's oh, funny. Awesome. That's awesome. Layla, you want to say hi to everyone? Layla. Layla. She's too busy cooking. Who else? Anybody else want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Abigail and I'm 10 and I'm in fifth grade. Abigail, welcome. So good to see you. Oh my God, that smells that's good. That's awesome. Yeah, our is uh... That smells mighty good. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow, he's 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 really uh, he's a real pro, isn't he? There's a question um, about the time, and I think um, the question is whether they should take the time out at the end after the pasta cooks. And I think if you use the time on the, um, what do you call that part of it? On this twig, then yes. If you've got just like leave, then you can leave it in. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, I don't find it. it. Um, so are we throwing in the whole one pound box of uh, pasta or just half of it? I would say yes, because you guys are using a bigger quantity than I am. Uh, Unfortunately, I have, uh, I'm in the DMV area, so I, I, I can't, you know, drop this stuff off. Okay. Uh, I'd like that. So I would say go ahead and uh, uh, I would say go ahead and do that. Yeah, throw the whole pound, full pound bag in. Joyce, Joyce it's too much. I, I didn't put, I didn't put that much in. I put in about two thirds of it, and it's taking up a lot of the pot. So yeah, I was going to say the recipe calls for two cups. And yeah, it calls for two cups. That's right. Okay, and so I to be I much more than cup. Cup. Shall I keep with two cups in? Okay. Yeah, I put two cups in, and, and it's done, and it okay. looks uh, it looks the the uh, balance looks about right. Okay. Okay. I, I, box, box, and it works. Sorry, Joyce. Sorry, Joyce, I, I stand corrected on that. <laughs> so, um, I, should I, been, I should have been answering that in the first place. I assume that a pound would, would it, it seems like you guys are making bigger quantities, but if you're saying that, you know, it's, it's filling it up just fine, then talk, better you take it from the experts. So I did a pound of the orecchetti and it looks just right. I mm -hmm. think I have um, too much chicken. I did four chicken breasts um, and maybe they're just a little overly hormoned or something. So I'm just going to do it by hand and the rest will become curry chicken salad. Oh, very nice. Now you're speaking my language. That might be my issue too. I put in five chicken breasts because I figure I'm donating this to, and I want to give the protein to the people in need. So I used five chicken breasts and maybe that's why the pasta, I had to cut back on the pasta because the pot is very full and I did add a little more water. So oh. that's play it by that your voice. Okay, that's good. No, I will, because I have five chicken breasts too, but I haven't put them in yet. So I will reserve some for curry chicken. Yeah, I was actually taken aback when you guys were saying you had such uh, large quantities of chicken. I said, boy, they're, woo, they're making a lot of soup. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm only using one here. Uh, but I, I, but as also uh, just, you know, I'll throw this out there. I like actually more of the veggies and less of the chicken in the soup. That's just me, though. Some people like them more chunky. I, I agree. I think if I make this again, I would definitely add more celery, more carrots, and more onion, and maybe only four chicken breasts and kind of balance it out a little more. Because the carrots seem lonely. Yeah. Okay, just sing to your food, it'll taste better. I was just going to say, we have five minutes left. What kind of a song do you think we ought to be singing to our food? Maybe oh, you can get I'll, us started. 
We're not oh, that, uh, Zishan, let's all sing. Lead yeah. us into something. Yeah, what do you think? You're in the world. Well, there's going to be so we'll, we'll be a little off, but how about we do one we all know? Uh, you know, so the pandemic took away someone who I really, really loved and who I think all of you really loved. And, he, and I think that the spirit of kind works is such that, you know, we're... Uh, we're asking where we're, we're, you guys are all putting yourselves out there to help those in need. And, and you're basically saying, Hey, lean on me, you know, mm -hmm. when you're too strong and I'll be your friend, you know? And so why don't we sing? I don't, <laughs> there'll be latency. There'll be, you know, so we'll be a lot, it'll be a spirited chorus. So it's like, let's, let's sing uh, some Bill Withers song. Alive. It might help if you did a little conductor for us, because I always I, I find it will help because, like I said, my my uh, my timing is going to be off, but I'll I'll try. Here we go. Let, it's let, so hard let, to synchronize. One, one time. <laughs> we are the but if we are wise, we know that always our own me when you're that strong, and I'll be your friend, and I'll help you. to do that you know uh, uh to, to to do that uh virtually like that that's the first time they always tell us that there'll be latency and there'll be you know delays and this and that but uh it was very spirited and um uh, i just want to thank all of you for coming on this and and for doing this amazing work with kind works uh thank you to salman depp for having me and um uh i'm just so blessed to have to to be in your presence and 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 your communities, your local communities, and 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 the other communities at large that you are helping um, are very lucky to have you in their corner too. That that they can lean on you, um, and uh, yeah, so this is uh, this soup is going to be great. Thank you so Thank you. much for sharing yourself with us today. Thanks everybody for coming and for cooking with us. So much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Dishan, thank you so much. And it thank you very fun. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. This was great. Everybody, look thank, you. Cat. thank you. Look thank at you. the cat. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Enjoy. form. Tell us where you bring your soups. Oh, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. It's a big hug for everybody. Big hugs. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Great to see you. Thank you. Kind works rocks. <laughs> bye bye. Hey, Susan. Susan and David. Hey, so glad you're here. Were you guys here the whole time?
Yes. Hi. Hi. Look, look, this is, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> We're a little behind. We're a little behind. We're a little behind, We're a little behind but catching up. That's okay. Oh. Hi, Art. Oh. Hey. David, hi. We should, David, Thanks. we should have got, David, we should have had you singing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, 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 I, next time. that, and that's a tough act to follow. That's the definition of an impossible act to follow. He was amazing. Oh, no. we, we've had jam sessions with Zishan, and it's a lot of fun. So we have, we're going to have to do that. Yeah, yeah. Sign me up. Wow. I'm, I'm up for it. <laughs> Great seeing you guys. Yes, you hey, too. Uh, we, um, I don't know how much quantity we're going to get, but, um, but we were going to stop by. Where, where do you recommend we go get containers for this? Probably the giant. Um, where do yeah, you get your containers? You know what? Well, we order them off of, or many of us do anyway, off web restaurant, which you don't want to do because you're looking for it. So I would just go to a supermarket, okay. you know, get any size container. I mean, where are you going to be donating? Are you in our, in the DMV? Where, yeah, yeah. We're down, we're just down the road DC. from, uh, oh. Oh, okay. of, a number of people have gone like to the deli at the giant or Safeway and told them what we were doing. And they just gave them a whole bunch of, um, oh, nice. Okay, Sorry, that's a great idea. Containers? You want to swing by? I have lots, lots of pots. <laughs> but you have to swing by with a big pot. There we go. We'll just bring our pot over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you all for inviting us and thanks for doing this. It's yeah, awesome. that was fun. Thank you. Oh, yeah, it was really fun. Thanks for joining us. Every Saturday, five o'clock. So join us anytime. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Take care.